I am now sponsored by SeatGeek and FanDuel. Make sure to use code BENGAL. That's code BENGAL for $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek and $20 free to play when you sign up for FanDuel. Also, check out my Twitch for live streams, a second channel for other games. Both links are in the description. What's going on, guys? Bangle again here, coming back at you with another video. Today, we're talking about a trade that happened. And uh, you'll have to excuse me, my cat is hanging out for this one. So, if she has something to add, bear with me. She's a talkative uh, little cat. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Joel Flacco got traded today from the Baltimore Ravens to the Denver Broncos. And it's actually being reported that the Ravens are being compensated with a mid-round pick, which is more than I expected uh, them to get in return. I thought Joe Flacco would probably be worth something along the lines of a, uh, a fifth or a sixth. And when they say mid-round, that leads me to believe, you know, more like a fourth, maybe even a third-round pick, which is uh, something very, very interesting. For the Ravens, they were going to cut him anyway if they couldn't trade him pretty much. So they're going to save... Ten and a half million in cap space. However, because they chose to get rid of him this year opposed to next year, they're carrying sixteen million in dead money on their twenty nineteen cap. So it does th save them money initially. So if they want to make some moves for this off season, um, they're capable of doing so. But that sixteen million dollar cap hit that's extending over to the next season uh, really shouldn't be too that too bad with the uh, the cap space saved. It's only like six million or five and a half. So that's not too bad at all. So I think this is super interesting for a team like the Denver Broncos because they're picking inside the top 10. Very, very high in, in the draft, at number 10, I believe. And for a team that was probably going to look for a quarterback inside one of the first two rounds, they still might. Don't get me wrong here. I think it's very possible that the Broncos still choose to go quarterback here. However, I think it's slightly less likely. What Joe Flacco is going to do for the Broncos is essentially be a bridge quarterback. So he's going to hold the Broncos over until they can draft a quarterback or find a new one because clearly Case Keenum was not going to work in Denver. I'm, sh I'm shocked the Broncos even got him. He's not a typical John Elway quarterback, if you will, which is size and arm strength. That's just not where Case Keenum, Case Keenum really uh, excels. But Joe Flacco, on the other hand, he's tall. What six foot six probably on Joe Flacco with a or Joe Flacco with a rocket arm. This is a guy that has done it for a long time. Of course, you guys will remember him uh, as a Super Bowl champion, and Joe Flacco not only won the Super Bowl, but had one of the most impressive playoff runs in NFL history at least statistically for a quarterback. I think it was something along the lines of 12 touchdowns, uh, zero interceptions. Maybe he threw one, but I think it's something along those lines. The numbers are irrelevant, but we know that Joe Flacco uh, has had the ability of doing this in the past, right? So he's at least better than average. Now, I know on the uh, acquisition of Joel Flacco, the Broncos' Super Bowl odds actually got worse. They got worse, which is astounding to me because you can't really do much worse than Case Keenum performed with the Broncos this past season. He was supposed to be a bridge QB, yet they signed him to, what, a four-year deal or so? Just a weird, weird move. And now they've gone and, and traded for their quarterback for at least this next season. However, Joel Flacco still keeps that contract, which means that they can get cut or he can get cut from the Broncos. They can cut him uh, and save a bunch of money next season. So this is overall, I think, a decent move for the Broncos. They haven't really hurt themselves in any way, even though their Super Bowl odds got worse. I think they probably got a little bit better. And, you know, Joel Flacco is someone that's going to fit their offense a little bit better than Case Keenum did. And I want to talk about the Broncos a little bit before we brush up on some other NFL topics before we leave. I just don't want to make other videos on them. It's going to be Corey Legion and Antonio Brown. So if you guys care about that, stay till the end. Um, and Demarius Thomas even. But the Broncos, as I said before, can still go quarterback here. However, I think it's more likely that with, you know, Joel being a bridge quarterback, they can take a different position of need like cornerback like pretty much cornerback take a corner <laughs> i think that's pretty much what it's going to come down to 
their offensive line does have some holes. If they lose Matt Paradis at center, it's going to be an even bigger hole. You, you don't take a center first round, probably. So there should be some decent ones available in the second round, whether that's Ellison Jenkins out of Mississippi State or Garrett Bradbury out of NC State. You could grab either one of those guys. There are a number of players that are actually valued pretty highly, in my opinion, that uh, have a history of playing center or interior offensive line, whether it's guard or left guard, right guard, whatever, center. So, I mean, there are a number of options you can choose to replace him probably in round two, but you might be hearing Greedy Williams' name get called on draft night at number 10 if the Broncos don't choose to trade up or down. Uh, they still could take a quarterback, Drew Locke. You know, that, that's pretty much what I'm going to say. Drew Locke, maybe a Daniel Jones or a Dwayne Haskins. It depends how the draft plays out, man. You never know. Byron Murphy could be another name that goes real high. If he rises up, he could go top 10 maybe at number 10. Uh, I could also see DeAndre Baker, cornerback out of Georgia. He could go at number 10, but I think the Broncos likely will look to take cornerback with that pick. There are a bunch of really good ones in this class. It's going to be interesting to see the risers and the fallers. The combine will play a small, uh, small role in that. We will definitely have to see. But overall, I didn't really talk too much about the Ravens. I think they got more value than I expected, which pretty good on their end. And the Broncos... You're not really giving up that much. I know mid rounds and late rounds can turn into something, you know, decent, but it, it's a rarity that that ends up happening. So while you can take a Tom Brady, you can also take a, I don't know, man, I, I, who who goes in the fifth round who's not good. I mean, there have been plenty of higher picks that don't work out. You can imagine how often it happens in the fifth round. Moving on here to a new topic at the moment. We're going to talk about Antonio Brown has officially asked for a release from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Or not release, for trade. So I imagine that he will be traded sometime this offseason. It's going to cost the Steelers a little bit financially. They're going to lose some money. Uh, going to be some dead cap carrying over into 2019. However, with the money that they saved from Le'Veon Bell and the franchise tag... I think they're going to be fine to take that hit. It's really not going to be too much. But I think a really interesting one that's kind of flown under the radar is Corey Legion. His option is not being picked up on the Chargers, and, Chargers, and he's a good player. Corey Legion is good. He's a good 3-4 defensive end. I'll be honest with you. I'm not really sure how his performance was this past season. But overall, he's a good player, and it does shock me that, uh, that he is being essentially released because if he's not being... Uh, re-signed or they're not picking up his his one-year option now he's essentially being released it's not the same but he's going to test free agency and he should be a decently valued free agent you need a defensive tackle or a 3-4 defensive end I think Corey Legion's going to be your guy he's only 28 years old he only played six games this past season three starts kind of weird but I think in general he's a pretty good player surgery this past year may have hurt him a little bit Demarius Thomas cut I'm going to be honest at this point I don't really think there's too much value to that because he's 31 years old, coming off a torn Achilles in December. He's owed too much. He's probably going to be looking for a lot of money, and he could be signed. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where Demarius Thomas goes. I think the main value to a receiver like Demarius Thomas was his speed and his size, and he doesn't really have that speed anymore. His hands have been suspect. I'm not really sure what his value is in the open market. Uh, also, if you did hear me calling Joe Flacco Joel and you've made it to this point in the video, I did tweet out that I might just call Joe Flacco Joel Flacco the entire video and see how many of you guys don't follow me on Twitter. So, if uh, Joel, his name's not Joel. Yeah, I, I know, obviously. I think that's very, very clear. If you guys want to follow me on uh, Twitter, I think that'd be absolutely fantastic. Link is always is in the description. Twitter.com slash Bengal Designs. I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Bengal you guys want to check that out what else is another move that's pretty much going to be it nothing else really seems too influential to me right now if you guys want me to make a separate video on the AAF let me know I know there there have been a few comments requesting that but overall I'm not I'm not really sure what I can tell you about it or my opinion on it but if you want me to make a video on it expressing my opinions about it just let me know down in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, I think overall, this was a good trade for both the Broncos and the Ravens. I know it's lackluster. A lot of people were saying like, hey man, who cares? But I think there is a value to this. I'm not sure what it does for the Broncos record-wise. It's better than Case Keenum in my opinion. I think if the Broncos get 
seven wins, eight wins in the AFC West. I think it's probably around their range. Eight is probably the upper end. The only reason I say that is because they're in the same division as the Chargers. And of course, as the Chiefs, it's going to be very, very tough for the, them to compete, Joe Flacco or not. The reason that they made this trade is because they think they can win now, compete for a wild card spot. It's going to be tough to make it, but if they can push the needle and get nine wins, sneak into the playoffs, ten wins, sneak into the playoffs, I think they're going to be in a decent position for maybe three teams to make the playoffs out of the AAC West, but I really wouldn't count on it. I think it's going to do it. If you guys want to see another separate video on Antonio Brown, you're going to have to wait for him to get actually moved. I've already made one in the past. So you can check that out on the channel. It's in the NFL Opinions playlist. And that will do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.